Hello, 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 my little maniacs. This is your host, the Maniacs Gaming. Coming back at ya with another video. In today's video, we are going to be previewing the Buccaneers versus Eagles game that is going to be played today, which I will be streaming after this. Let's get it. So game details. The game will be played at 1 o'clock today in Tampa, Florida. Obviously, this is massive that it was able to stay in Florida as there was that hurricane that went through. Hopefully, everyone that's there is doing okay and will be able to get Florida back up. But just thoughts and prayers out to Florida as a whole and other areas that are going to be that were affected by the hurricane. Uh, for but then anyway, for I important information, we got the injuries. So Kalaja Kansi is still out. He has not played a single game so far this season. AWJ who has not played since week one. Gadecki has not played since, I think, week one as well. Uh, AWJ's got a uh, sprain, I believe it was, and then Gadecki uh, has a concussion. He's still not cleared protocol. He was really close last week, so hopefully he'll be back Thursday for the Falcons game. And then McMillan was also ruled out with, I believe it was a hamstring injury that he suffered in practice on Friday. And then for the Eagles side, uh, Devonta Smith is out with a concussion as well as Lane Johnson's out with a concussion, and then A.J. Brown, who practiced very limitedly on Friday with a hamstring injury. It was first practice in a couple weeks for him, but he has also been ruled out with an injury. And then just another one that I kind of want to throw in here, just because, again, I am a Tampa fan, but uh, Devin White is inactive for the Eagles, so he will not be having a revenge game against Tampa Bay this season unless they meet up in the playoffs. But Devin White has not played a single game for the Eagles yet this season, so we'll have to see what happens there. Anyway, last week review. i just like to do a review over last week's games for both teams. So let's get it. So the Buccaneers hosted the Denver Broncos at home and lost 26-7. to I did a whole video of my breakdown of that. Go ahead, Feel free to go check that out. I'll have it linked at the beginning of this video. So if you haven't already, go check that out. Defense overall was really rough really rough 20 points let up in the first half granted i do not blame them for seven of those points as baker mayfield was picked off and it was returned to the nine yard line and the defense had to do their best to hold the broncos offense at that point and they ha managed to hold them to a fourth and goal situation where the broncos eventually got in with the touchdown so i can't really be too mad at the at the offense so at the defense so overall they let up 13 points in this first half that i can blame on them and in the second half, they held the Broncos to only six. Which, honestly, so, like, if that second half defense can show up, I think the Bucks will be a lot better. And then offense is just a what the... As they scored seven total points in the entire game. Obviously, nothing was able to go right for them. They couldn't get receiving game going. They couldn't get the run game going. Pass protection was a little bit crappy. Baker Mayfield just could not shake his interception after he was picked off early on in the game by the Broncos after they jumped a route intended for Mike Evans. It was just a rough game overall for the offense. Baker Mayfield just made some horrible throws. The receivers just could not get any separation, and when they could get separation, Baker was just too hesitant to throw it. He was pump faking, rolling out into his own pressure, causing his own sacks. It's really unfortunate that that happened, but offense just needs to get a nice bounce back, and hopefully they can do it this week. As for the Eagles side, they went to New Orleans to play the Saints, and they wound up beating the Saints 15-12. to their offense overall was looking a little rough outside of game, big games from Dallas Goddard and Saquon Barkley. Da Saquon, I believe, had the big run of like 60 yards to get the touchdown f that put the Eagles on top of the Saints. But overall, their offense, while it was looking a little rough, their defense actually looked really good. Obviously, they held the Saints to only 12 points. And they, I believe they held Rashid Shahid without a single catch. So obviously, overall, the Eagles defense did really good last week. The Saints' defense, offense was obviously one of the high-scoring units. If it wasn't the highest scoring over the first two weeks, I believe it was, though. So, Eagles' defense really showed up when they needed them to and was able to contain the Saints' offense and be able to shut down Derek Carr in that offense. Now, the biggest question marks for the Buccaneers are going to be their run game and O-line, as well as injury replacements and pass rush. For the Bucs, obviously, the run game has always has been a massive question mark since week one, as Rashad White has just not been... What we all expect him to be. Bucky Irvin has looked good in the limited snaps that he's been able to play, but we're gonna have to see if he's gonna be able to keep that production up as he's gonna be as he has earned more snaps according to Todd Bowles. 
And then the O-line, obviously, is just not making holes for Rashad, which is a big difference between him and Bucky, is that Rashad is going to need those holes to be able to go through, or he's going to run to the back of the O-line, whereas Bucky is going to be on his feet, stutter step, and trying to make something happen out of nothing. And then injury replacements, again, no AWJ, no Gadecki, so we're going to need some guys to step up to replace those guys. Hopefully we can get that, and so that way there's limited loss there, especially on the O-line is going to be a big question mark as the O-line did not help Baker much last week with getting pressure in his face. And another one is pass rush. We just let Bo Nix sit back in the pocket last week looking like a prime Brady, prime Manning. He just had it all day to throw. Bucks have not gotten a single sack since week one. Granted, this is without Kalijah Kansi playing. This is without Vita Vea playing. This is with Yaya only playing at about 60% due to his injuries. So it's going to be something we're going to have to see. Hopefully this gets improvement later on. And hopefully some of the rookies such as Chris Braswell can step up to be able to get some extra pressure going for the Bucks. As for the Eagles, I think a big question mark for them is going to be their secondary. Because obviously last year in the playoffs, their secondary really struggled to contain the Bucks' pass offense. Such as, Mc, such as Trey Palmer, who's still here. Mike Evans still had a good good game godwin had a great game so a big question mark is going to be there obviously they added a couple pieces to that unit to be able to make it a little bit better but so we're, that's going to be a big question mark for them is how well they can control that uh, that pass offense from the buccaneers and then a big question mark for them receivers because outside dallas goddard their entire receiver room is hurt Britton cubby's on ir devon smith is out with a concussion aj brown is out with a hamstring so obviously they're going to have to have other receivers step up to be able to fill that void and obviously have Dallas Goddard just be there to be able to be that security blank for Jalen Hurts out of the tight end spot, and then Saquon out of the backfield, hopefully. And another big question mark for them is going to be Fred Johnson, who is going to be stepping in at right tackle in place of Lane, who is injured for this game. So it's obviously that's going to be a big question mark for them, is can he just slow down the pass rush of the Bucks just to give Jalen the time to make the plays, and also give time for Saquon out of the backfield or in the run game to be able to get some yards. So the big keys to the game for the Bucks are going to be their offense, their defense, their linebackers, and DBs. So for the offense, obviously they want to be able to get down the field. They're going to have to be able to win. But obviously they're going to need to do a lot better with getting down the field and just ending drives in the end zone, getting points up on the board. D-line's going to have to get into the backfield to make plays, whether it's sacking Jalen, tackling him for a loss, or tackling Barkley, Barkley for a loss, or just making Jalen make throws he doesn't want to make. The D-line's going to have to step up here. And the linebackers and DBs, a big part of this game for the Eagles is probably going to be Dallas. So obviously the linebackers and DBs are going to have to step up to be able to slow Dallas down as he really did really well last week against the Saints. So he's going to be a key part of the Eagles game plan. Uh, then Eagles, a lot of their game plan is going to rely on their defense, specifically their secondary, as they're going to need to be able to contain that pass-happy offense for the Bucks. Slow down Mike, slow down Godwin. That's going to be a lot of big keys to this game. And then obviously the run game is going to be a massive key to this game as they're going to need to run through Saquon. They're going to need to run with Jalen Hurts. They want to control that time of possession in order to slow down the Bucks and make sure they don't have enough time to get back on the field to be able to score. So those are the big keys for them. And then just for players to watch for the Bucks, obviously Evans and Godwin as they're going to be hopefully Baker's main go-to weapons this game as well as Vita Vea, who's coming back from an injury that he suffered week two against the Lions. He is going to be one of the main men responsible for taking on Saquon in the D-line spot, be able to hopefully slow him down in the backfield, and just be able to limit Saquon's production out of the run game. And for the Eagles, Jalen Hurts, how is he going to perform without his wide receivers? He's going to have to step up and make some plays with not only his arm, but his leg, legs in order to keep the Eagles into this game. And then Dallas, obviously, is going to be one of Jalen Hurts' main weapons as he's one of their most reliable players out of that tight end spot. And then, obviously, Saquon is going to be responsible for most of the run game. Short passes out of the backfield, that's all going to be run through Saquon. The Eagles are going to look to utilize him in order to just keep the game moving how they would like it to move. Anyway, to end off the stream, guys, we've got my content for this week. So I'm going to have quite a bit of content this week due to the fact the Bucks also play on Thursday this week. So after this video, I will be streaming the Buccaneers game versus the Eagles around 1 o'clock, which is about half an hour from now when I'm recording this. And then a breakdown of the game will hopefully be either Tuesday or Wednesday. Tuesday's the goal, but it's probably going to be Wednesday just due to other things I'm going to have to do. 
and then other videos. I think the prediction video is going to come out Wednesday or t Thursday morning, as I am going to be streaming the the Bucks Falcons game on Thursday Night Football this week. So I will also be doing a prediction a preview video for the Buccaneers Falcons game before that as well. So there's going to be a lot of videos this week. Not sure about any other streams that aren't going to be football related, just because again I've got a lot of other stuff I'm going to be doing just to be ready for that. But we will have to see. Maybe I'll do a different stream on Sunday where I won't be doing my Bucks game on Sunday. We'll have to see. But anyway, guys, that is going to do it for me today. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and turn on that noni bell on the road to 2,000 subscribers. Try and hit that by the end of the year. Try and hit 1,600 by the end of next month. Let's get it, fam. And as always, I will see all you guys later. Stay crazy, fam.